What would you say are the uh, major areas of marketing where the internet is having an impact? Well, I have to say that it's impacted everything. And, you know, the interactive and internet and mobile have totally revolutionized marketing. Uh, but different industries have been different, uh, have been impacted at different times. So, for example, if you're selling stuff on the internet, obviously the internet's completely central to your business. So Amazon uses the internet for lead generation, advertising, almost everything. Whereas perhaps somebody selling, uh, you know, consumer packaged goods or uh, fast-moving uh, you know, snack products, maybe got to the game a little bit later. But from public relations to you know, to lead generation to straight up brand marketing, it's essential because that's where people are spending their time. What are the uh, more established channels of internet communication? Well, it's interesting because a traditional marketer might think of the internet or interactive advertising as one broad channel, but when you actually have to do the work in that, um, in that channel, there's a lot of things we use that are very different and are used for different things. So the more established ones would be, obviously, for number one would be your website, which is your corporate presence or your consumer-facing presence for a product or, uh, or brand. And that really is the first stop for most uh, consumer research these days on your product, on information about your product, or even the category of your product. So by having a a very professional, clean-looking, informative website that's easy to use and inter inter um, interface with it, uh, you're going to get a lot more response and positive uh, brand image for your product. Th the site is critical. You can't simply ignore it, even with a very sophisticated ad campaign. That said, sites are usually found through searches, so search is a huge, huge area for advertising. It would be uh, the bare minimum brand marketers need to make sure they've secured their own brand name so that their, uh, their information shows up in searches. Uh, so they've got to secure the most common search terms. They even have to secure the things that might be relevant to a brand. So for example, Geico not, is not going to just you know, secure Geico and make sure that they appear in auto insurance um, searches, but they're also going to make sure they secure uh, someone who might be searching on that lizard commercial about insurance because even though that person may not have made that brand association, that is one of their trademarks. And yet, importantly for GEICO, if they miss that opportunity, one of their competitors, say Nationwide or an Allstate, could, could make that connection and capture that customer. So it's very important to monitor uh, search both as a proactive marketing tool and more broadly as a way that people are researching information so that your brand appears in the right places. Then we've got display ads. That's very traditional. That's the banner ad that we've all known and loved or loathed since it started. But uh, it's got many variations now. The uh, Interactive Advertising Bureau has pages and pages of the standardized sizes, which are useful even though people sometimes poo-poo the effect. When you're trying to do brand advertising, it's certainly one of the best ways to do it. Uh, a movie is not going to be searched out and, and as a, it's not going to be as impactful to do any movie advertising without some visuals, be able to see the title. Uh, anything where you might have brand imagery simply won't be as effective in, in a tiny little classified type ad on search. And also, you, you, know, you have to look at it in terms of volume. There's a lot more space there. The, um, the interesting thing also is in display ads, we tend to overlook the fact that they can be very interactive. There's some really fantastic and interesting things that are being done with video, interactivity, and things like that that also f fall sort of in that gray area between the online video channel and the um, display advertising channel. And usually those technologies, there's tons of innovation, a lot of rich uh, new ways to expand ads, to allow customers to take a look at some, something and get more information without actually leaving their destination that they're, they're on at the time. So if you're reading an article, it doesn't necessarily have to take you away to get the information you want about the brand. We've got email, which is often overlooked. Email is almost essential for customer communications, uh, whether it's giving someone a thank you and a receipt from, a, from an order or continuing that customer relationship, vital, vital tools that every, every company that uses finds an enormous return on investment. The sneaky thing about email is we don't see it up there in the revenue breakdown as much because you tend to spend your money in email on enabling tools. It's not that you buy email advertising directly as much as you spend money on specialized servers or software to manage that interaction with customers. And part of that's due to the regulatory nature of privacy, but it's also very important to note that it's sort of, if you were building a house yourself and you just added up the cost of the tools, it still wouldn't represent the value you're getting necessarily. So email is sort of that dark horse that's still used by everyone in the know, particularly in e-commerce for customer communications and building that brand community at the very least. Um, 
the uh, other, you know, there's a dozen emerging channels, whether you consider social media and, and user-generated content emerging or, uh, you know, everything down to Twitter. There's lots of those. But those are sort of the, the, the ones that people are very comfortable with, have more standardized metrics and ways of, you know, measuring return on investment and effectiveness. And that's what I would say is the, the basic toolkit. You mentioned uh, Twitter. That's clearly an emerging channel. Could you talk a little bit about other emerging channels of uh, internet communication? Well, it's very interesting because interactive advertising has only been standardized and even had a track record that we can look back at and say is comparable for you know, 10, a dozen years, something to that effect. So the channels I initially talked about are simply the ones that were more established and more standardized early. And it's important to remember that those are the elements that start to distinguish an emerging channel from a more standardized channel in almost any medium. There has to be a simple way to buy it. There has to be a simple way to clear the market at a, an effective price, to measure its effectiveness. So that implies a whole range of things, you know, auditing services, third party, you know, people to check on it, ways to buy the media in large quantities for the audiences you're looking for that can be verified and effectively tracked. All of those elements don't exist in a lot of places. For example, Twitter is a, all the phenomenon right now. And Twitter in some ways is a combination of uh, instant messaging and texting and email in some ways. It's a broadcast medium. But the most important thing about Twitter is that it's real time and the trackability as it improves allows us to begin to see if we're being effective. One of the most um, interesting things about Twitter is the most effective measure of its success is a click-through rate, which goes all the way back to the most basic advertising we've done online. But uh, for, in terms of emerging channels, once you get past the parts of standardizing the advertising formats, which is important because you do not want to have to make a separate ad for every single version of the service. So for example, the banner, it, as we know it, came into a standardized format, and that has made it much easier to, to create the actual ad itself, lowers the hurdles to trying it. Beyond that, we've got a range of new channels, everything from social media to mobile to Twitter. You, you could name it anything you want. The real important thing to do with a channel that may be unproven is to not be afraid of it, to be willing to test out the, uh, the channel and put some money behind it. Not too much, but enough to get some effective data. And to do that, you have to take a step back and say, strategically, what am I trying to do here? If I'm trying to sell something, then the channel might not be effective. As we found with, for example, Second Life. Second Life is a, arguably a, one of the most innovative companies that out there, and it's an immersive world that a lot of people want to try. But my advice to a lot of companies was, don't use it unless you're going to be able to get a press release out of it. Because it was unproven and unclear what value it would have beyond making the announcement that you were the first person in Second Life. Uh, there wasn't a lot of sales transactions happening there. It required some expense if you put up a virtual store to actually staff the store, even virtually. So uh, with emerging channels, there's a sort of a cynical view where try to get the press release. Uh, but the real, the strategic view would be figure out what you can measure and what your goals are, and then throw some test money behind it. If you're effective with that, you can then elaborate on it and figure out what works. And even if it's not effective, it'll at least be a learning experience that will allow you to move your money into more effective areas. Because the problem tends to be not that we can't do the math and figure out how to compare one channel versus another apples to apples. It's that somebody comes up with oranges, and we haven't yet figured out how to put it into our box of tools yet.